All right, so I remembered to record. We're just doing the warm up. So, what do you guys get? You get 28 divided by 8, which is 3.5. 2.5. I knew that. And then, got 3.5? Oh, I guess my graph is wrong. I guess at 3.5, I trust you guys. And then 16 minus 12 over 2, over 8. What am I doing? Over, it should be 8. Should be 0 0.5, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Good thing you guys are. Good thing you guys are on the ball today. All right. Um, the sketch. I just need to fix that. I guess. Make a note to myself. All right. Uh, I think uh, most many of you guys will be able to do method one because you did a lot of practice yesterday. I'd love if you tried method two as well. We'll just we'll give it the old. We'll give it the old college try. Um, but remember, for the most part, you guys just get to pick. So what do we got? We have four, we had minus 16, and we had seven. So negative 16 over two times four. Did you guys get negative two or positive two? Oh, yeah, positive two. 16 over 2, over 8. You guys got 2 for the axis symmetry? All right. And then we're just finding f at 2. So 4 times 2 squared. This should just all go in into your scientific calculator as you see it with the brackets, and it'll spit out a y value for you. All right, I gotta, I've gotta hit the reset button here. I've hit it, made a lot of mental mistakes. We got this one. 16 minus 16 minus nine, right? So the vertex, two minus nine, and then our vertex form, four times x minus two squared minus nine. You guys remember the four, writing your vertex form? All right. Um, now, I wanted to do, uh, just because to maybe give you guys, some of you guys a, a second chance to fall in love with the algebraic method, but my anticipation is most of you guys will not prefer the second method, um, but we'll just, give it, we'll just give it another chance, okay? Um, I'll maybe get a step done, give you guys a chance to continue. We'll see. 4x squared minus 16x. What was the last one? 7. All right, so if you guys remember, we want to get a, a binomial squared. Uh, to do that, we had to just have x squared. So we, we partially factored out this 4 yesterday and divided out the 4. We leave the 7 alone like that. Now, can you guys on your own maybe take it a bit further what do we have to add on here to make a perfect square trinomial? We're going to add it. We're going to subtract it. We had a little rule yesterday. Maybe you guys have your note out. I'll wait a second. I'll have a sip of coffee. Just water, actually. Try to hit the reset. We're going to re-re-hit the reset button. And i got to talk to all your parents tonight, too. Man. Uh, did anyone figure out what to add and subtract? Make a perfect square trinomial? Remember the rule was we take that value in front of the x, which is negative 4. You divide it by 2 and then square it. That gives you 4, right? Half of negative 4 is negative 2. Square that. You get 4. So we're going to add 4 and subtract 4. Why subtract also? Well, if we don't subtract 4, we're changing the equation. We're adding 4, and then it changes what the equation is. And the really neat thing about this was now that um, those first three terms are a perfect square trinomial, 
What adds to minus 4? Multiplies to positive 4. Minus 2 and minus 2. And we still have our minus 4 on the end. And we have our plus 7 outside the brackets. Uh, now, if you guys, and maybe just give this a try, if you guys can distribute the 4, uh, add those. You guys need the, the back corner there. We had this problem last time we had to split up. You guys are being really distracting. You got to be quiet. I got lots of space to separate you guys. Thanks for your cooperation. Uh, so distribute the 4. 4 times x minus 2 squared. Does this work? 4 times minus 4 is minus 16. And then add 7. Uh, yeah, it does work. Because minus 16 and 7 make minus 9. As I said, I think most of you guys will prefer method one. And if you're just a method one person right now and you're in that camp, that's good. Just stay there. You're going to be fine. Three you people today, we do one or two completing the squares of algebra, but they're not as hard as this one. You'll be fine. Um, all right. Uh, I'm going to do my attendance while you guys think about the back. Okay. So I've got a little application here. So the cost for Bort to operate his truck, the fuel costs anyway, it depends on how fast he drives his truck. So you guys know if you drive really, really fast, you revs the engine up, you burn more fuel. But if you drive really slow, you may burn less fuel, but it takes you so long to get there that you end up having to pay a lot of money. So somewhere there's an ideal speed to minimize the cost of fuel. Can you guys uh, we, I showed you guys this tool yesterday. We just warmed up on it. Can you guys find the speed that will minimize our cost? I'm going to do my attendance, get the 3M people their assignment. What do you guys think on that? Tendence. Uh, right, little hint for you guys, right? If we're please work, stop, behave. Stop. 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 Okay. There we go. If you're trying to minimize your fuel costs, and this is a quadratic function, we're trying to find the vertex, and we know how to find the vertex. We just did it on the front. We have two methods for it. So maybe you guys can try to maybe you guys can try the axis of symmetry method here. Try to find the vertex as best you can. Great. Three M's will give you your task. You can get going afterwards. All right, so little real life application. What's our A? What's our B? What's our C? So the decimal shouldn't sh slow you guys down. You just dive right in. So B is minus 0.48. C is 142. And instead of X here, we're using V. So V is equal to negative B over 2A, 0 0.48, um, divided by 2 times 0 0.0029. 
Now, if you get a decimal, a nasty one, that's okay. That's real life for you. Let's just round to maybe one decimal place here. I got about 82.8. So you guys get that too? All right. And our speeds in kilometers per hour here. So actually note that we're done. This question, it wasn't asking you to find like how much will it cost to have an average speed of this. It just says how fast should Bort drive his, dr drive his truck to be most efficient. So uh, we're done. So Bort should get in his transport truck, 82.8 kilometers per hour, set the cruise control, and he's going to minimize his fuel costs. Although if he's on the 401, people are going to be very mad at him for driving that speed. All right. So um, anything you guys want to talk about? So now both classes, if I gave you guys an application like this, where I provided you with the equation, I'd still expect you guys to be able to complete the square just rounding with decimals, interpret the solution. So both courses, I'd expect that. The 3M people, I think I have one question like that on your one page task. And when you guys are done, uh, you guys are continuing to pra the practice from yesterday. All right. And then the three U people, come around and give you guys what we're doing. All right, everybody. So the three you people. So this is not grade 10 review stuff today, just like normal. This is where we're extending and covering um, uh, the material that's in the 3U course and not the 3M course. And today's lesson is about the inverse of a function. So I've got a little visual here that shows you guys what the inverse of a function represents. So it's a relation or function that undoes another function. So like second day of the course, we made little function machine diagrams that help you understand what a function is. You put in an X value and it spits out a Y value. What the inverse of a function is, it's the function where if you input the y value, it spits out the original x value. So it undoes the function. And there's some new notation for you guys for the inverse of a function f. It's this with the minus 1 as a bit of a superscript. This is the inverse of a function f. The inverse of f of x, we say f with that superscript minus 1. So it undoes another function. So this is going to be a useful idea in your grade uh, 12 uh, functions course. Uh, uh, so today we're going to get a little bit of practice finding some inverses. And uh, there's four ways you can do it. I'm going to show you guys some. Some uh, just require a little bit of uh, like a little graphical analysis. Uh, some we just kind of uh, can just think about it. Um, uh, think about the rules of the function. Uh, some require algebra. So here we go. Uh, we're going to start with a linear function. We're going to find the inverse of f of x equals 2x plus 1. We're going to do it four different ways. Um, so let's begin. First, let's do a table of values. So I think we'll just complete the table of values together. It shouldn't take a big long time here. So this rule is saying you double the x values and add 1, right? If you double negative 2 and add 1, so negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Oh, that should be a negative one, excuse me. Can you guys fix that, please and thank you? Uh, if you double negative one and add one, you get negative one. Two times zero is zero, plus one is one. And we just go up by two every time. To 
just gonna pause the video for a sec. Let's resume. All right, happy Mr. Smith back. We're doing the inverse. The inverse, we just swap the X and Y. Really easy when you have a table of values. So the inverse function would just be, instead of negative two, negative three, you just flip flop the X and Y. When you put in negative three, you get back the original negative two. And negative one, negative one, flip zero, one, you get one, zero. So it's pretty neat. Flip one, three, you get three, one. Flip two, five, you get five, two. And that's how you find the inverse of a function if you have a table of values. Basically, you just swap the X and Y. Uh, let's, do, let's do it graphically. So uh, we've got the original function and we've got five points. Let's graph those five points and graph what that line looks like. So negative two, negative three was one point and then negative one, negative one. So we're just graphing the original function here. I have the luxury of a straight line tool. That's the eraser tool. There's my straight line tool. Lovely. I'll label it f of x. Okay, and now to graph the inverse, all we do is we take all the points and we flip-flop their x and y. Now, I don't expect you guys to do this for all the points because the graph may get, get, might get a bit clunky. But here's the point minus two, minus three. And that point will go to somewhere new. You just flip the x and y, it goes to minus three, minus two. I might actually move that label down a little bit. Might put that here, let's say. Minus two, minus three. That goes to minus three, minus two. Now I'm gonna use a, I have the luxury of having different colored, uh, different colored, uh, a pe different colored pen here. Um, but can you guys take each individual point and swap the X and Y? That'll give you five new points and we'll see what this new graph looks like. Uh, you could also just use the five points in our table of values above. What happens when you flip-flop minus one, minus one? Same point, Jillian, same point. Yeah, exactly. And as you guys do a few more, think about what type of function do we get for the inverse of this linear function? So from zero, one, we go to one, zero. And from one, three, we go to three, one. I know you guys come to the table. From two, five, we go to five, two. What's that look like? Looks like a linear function, doesn't it, guys? That's a pretty neat idea. So let's uh, finish our line off. And then I just got a small note to add. So far, so good. Not so bad, this inverse of a function. And I'm gonna very clearly label that the inverse of f like so. And uh, if you guys would, can you squeeze this down at the bottom with me? So this is a really cool idea that works with all linear functions. The inverse of a linear function uh, is a linear function, which is pretty neat. That happens all the time. Now you might be saying, well, that's all nice. We get the graph, but what is the equation? That's a line. What would the equation of that line look like? So we're gonna do a third method here where we learn how to algebraically find the inverse of a function. Because it looks like this line has a y-intercept of minus a half and a slope of a one over two. Like how could we get that equation? So I'm gonna show you guys. It all comes down to swapping x and y. Uh, so uh, this is kind of the algebra portion of what we're doing. So the key idea is that you just interchange y and x and then rearrange for y. So what does that look like? Um, can you guys add this note? It actually is going to be more helpful for us to use our old notation y equals 2x plus 1. Okay, can you guys start with that? Can we admire how neat my printing is as well? That'll change. All right, 
So we want to find the inverse. What we do is we actually just, where the y is, we put x, and where the x is, we put y. We actually interchange x and y like this. x equals 2y plus 1. The inverse of this function will just be whatever you get when you isolate for y. And this isn't really a terrible uh, equation to rearrange for y. It's two steps. I'll do them with you. So the plus 1 will subtract it from both sides. We get x minus 1 on the left equals 2y. And then, of course, we're multiplying by 2. So to get y by itself, we'll divide both sides by 2. And we get x minus 1 all divided by 2. This is the inverse function. We'll wrap this up by saying the inverse function is x minus 1 over 2. And I'll put a little mini box around it. Now, that's not so bad. That's just rearranging a linear equation. And uh, if we can compare that with the graph, I think I can get both things on the screen at the same time. Yes, I can. If you think about this line, what's the y-intercept of this line? It's minus 1 divided by 2, minus 1 half, perfect. And then what's the slope of this line? 1 over 2, it's 1 over 2, just like the graph said. That's a neat little way to find the inverse of a function algebraically, just swap the x and y. Um, and then you could also actually just use your knowledge of uh, bed mass and opposite operations to come up with the inverse too. So check this out, guys. Think about the, the original equation. What do you do to x in order to get y? Like if you, spit, if you put an x value into this function, what does it do inside this machine to spit out y? Well, would you guys agree the first thing it does is it multiplies x by 2? And then the second thing it does is add 1. That's the two things, right? Would you guys agree? Multiply x by 2, and you add 1. So let's kind of chart that down in a little bit of like a, a flow chart almost. Like this. So we have an x value. And then we uh, multiply it by 2. I did this left to right when I wrote my note out today. Doing it top to bottom, a little bit of improvising. The, the improvising never backfires if you're a math teacher. Uh, and then we add one. And this gives you the y value. Well, what if you wanted to go the other way? If you wanted to put in a y value and get back the original x value, so let's do the same thing, but just work backwards. So if you start from the y value and work backwards, what's the opposite, guys, of adding one? You subtract one and then go back another step. What's the opposite of multiplying by two? Y by two. So if we just write that out, take the y value, subtract one, and then divide by two, just working the other way, you get the x value. And if we put that into math, that would say that the inverse to get the inverse function, you subtract 1, and then you divide by 2. Is, is that not just what we did before, guys? It's the same thing, right? Subtract, two, subtract 1, and then divide by 2. Okay? So you can get the, uh, the function two ways. You can use algebra, or you can um, use this idea of opposite operations. It gets to the same spot if the function is not too complicated. All right, uh, we found the inverse of a linear function in a lot of ways. Anything at all you guys want to chat about? It all comes down to this swapping x and y. That's the inverse of a function. All right, that was for a linear function. You guys ready to do a quadratic function? Let's do it. We can do it. Now, we're starting off with, a, uh, with, a, with not too bad of a quadratic function. I would say not very intimidating. Please forgive me, I also need to have that minus 1 there in the table. But let's find the inverse of x squared plus 3. And let's do the same order this time as well. Let's do the, the table of values. Let's see what that looks like on a graph. Then I'll have an interesting little tidbit to share with you guys. 
Um, and then we'll do it algebraically and see what we get. So here we go. Um, this rule says square x and then add 3. So negative 2 squared is 4. Add 3 is 7. That's not so bad for us to do. Negative 1 squared is 1. Add 3 is 4. 0 squared is 0. Add 3 is 3. And then it's symmetric. We get 4 and 7. Okay, I'm going to do a little tour and see how the three M's are doing. Can you guys, and if you're watching this at home, maybe pause the video. Uh, can you guys get the inverse function, the points anyway, graph the original and the inverse? And uh, yeah, and then I'll, I'll pick it up with the algebra for, with you guys. Dun, 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 I think I will. So we are resuming. Here we go. Uh, so the inverse function, you just flip-flop the x and y. So 7, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 3, 0, 4, 1, and 7, 2. Did you guys get the same thing? I wonder what the inverse of a parabola looks like when we graph it. Who can say? I don't even know. Um, so negative 2, 7. There, 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 and there. So that's our original function, f of x. And then we'll graph our five other points. Uh, so 3, 0. And then it was this one, and it was this one, and it was this one, and it was this one. Did you guys get something that looks like that? like a sideways parabola. Isn't that kind of cool? And I'll just label it F inverse of X. All right, I've got actually two notes for you guys to, to add on here. And the first one, so if you guys could tuck this note in, uh, let's go way back to the first week of the course. Look at that purple sideways parabola, the inverse of our original function. Is that actually a function? Why not? Fails a vertical line test. So can you guys add this in here? This is actually a really important idea. The inverse of a function. Might not be a function. In fact, the inverse of a parabola will always be a sideways parabola. That's not a function. But that's an important property for you guys to jot down. And would you guys agree there's almost like a little bit of symmetry here, right? Like if you think about like a mirror, it's almost like a reflection. But it's not like a sideways reflection or a vertical reflection. It's almost like a diagonal reflection. Would you guys agree? It's like, And if you go on the front one. Look at this. This first, these first two graphs too, they weren't exactly a vertical or a horizontal reflection, but if you can just tilt your head, you can kind of imagine a diagonal reflection. In fact, they are reflections. Can you guys add a little dashed line with me? I'm gonna dash the line y equals x. Can you guys do this on both? So I'm on the, the lines. Add this to your graph. I'm doing a dashed line the dashed line y equals x. So go through 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, etc. So this is on the front. Just dash in that line y equals x. Any function in its inverse are actually mere images, but across that line y equals x, which is pretty neat. Yes, Pete? Okay. And uh, if you do the same thing with our parabolas, check this out. If you graph the line y equals x. And uh, on your practice later, I've dashed it in for you. But look, there are actually mirror images in that line. That's probably the worst y equals x line ever. But they're kind of mirror images across that uh, diagonal line. So that's our second note down here. Please add this in. I don't know why I added compass. We're not drawing circles there. Uh, so, thank you. The 
function and its inverse are reflections in the line y equals x. Which actually makes sense at the end of the day, because to get the inverse, you're actually just basically swapping x and y's. So very cool idea. These are things I'd like you guys to know. That's why we're adding a note in there. All right, so you guys know how to find the equation of a parabola that opens up or down. You guys have not yet in your math careers found the equation of a parabola that opens sideways, but I'm gonna show you guys how that's done. Hold on to your butts. We got this. Let's start with y equals x squared plus three. So start with, this is true for all of them, start with, y equals x squared plus 3. Flip-flop the x and y. x equals y squared plus 3. And then do opposite operations. So let's get the y by itself. Now the first step you guys can do, what's the opposite of adding 3? You guys got this. Move it over, subtract 3. So x minus 3 equals y squared. Guys, what's the opposite of squaring? Square rooting. But we have to be careful here. So if you guys have space in your margin, this is worth jotting down. Okay, if I gave you guys an equation to solve and said, okay, x squared equals 4. Can anyone tell me what a solution to that equation is? Number squared gives me 4. Um. Two. two is one, yeah. Also negative two. When you're finding solutions when you're squaring something, you actually have to do both the positive and the negative. There's two solutions here, plus or minus two. You guys convinced there's two solutions here? When we do the same thing here, this is so important. You actually, we got to keep the plus and the minus. So that's why when I continue here, I'm not just going to put the root of x minus 3. I'm going to have plus or minus the square root of 3. This is the inverse. It's not just root x minus 3. It's actually both the positive and the negative. So the inverse is equal to plus or minus the root of x minus 3. So that's a really important idea introduced here in this course. All right, and then uh, the last uh, way to figure out the inverse, let's use opposite operations. So what's going on in our function machine when you put in x and you do the y value is x squared plus 3? So let's just jot that down. I like doing the top to bottom here. Let's just do that. So the you take the x value, you square it, and then you add 3. And that gives you the y value. Now, if you were to go the other way and start with your y value, opposite of adding 3 is subtracting 3. Opposite of squaring is square root. And could you guys, I'm going to add in like brackets here, just like a plus or a minus for that reminder for you guys. And that would give you the x value. So that's a second way to get the equation for the inverse. I'll just write that out. Start by subtracting 3. And then take the positive or minus square root, plus or minus. You do get the same thing we got above algebraically. All right, two examples in the books. Uh, Time-wise, we're still doing pretty good. Uh, I think this is enough for actually doing like a placemat the four different ways. We're going to dial it on one way for the next couple. Anything you guys want to chat about? Okay, let's continue. I hit resume, right? I did hit resume. Still got it. All right, guys. So for this third example, a different quadratic function, we're going to find the inverse of this guy. Algebra, using algebra. 
Now here's the issue with this one. There's not one single x that you could just think of opposite operations for. We've got an x squared and an x multiplied by the 6 there. So we can't use the method we had previously of like just talking about the opposite operations of working backwards. We need a way to rewrite this equation in a way that just has one x. It sure would be nice if some uh, handsome, intelligent teacher just taught you guys a way to rewrite these expressions with just a single x, right? That'd be so nice if that happened. And that did happen with even all the adjectives as well. Uh, we can complete the square. So uh, follow along, children. Here we go. We're going to, I'm just going to rewrite my function here. And to save space, I'm just going to complete the square using algebra, okay? So we'll do 6 divided by 2, and then square that. Can you guys do that? What do we get? Three squared is 9, right? We're going to add 9. We're going to subtract 9. Now you could use the other method as well, but I think that for this one, it's just quicker. And we're done. What numbers... Add to 6 and multiply to 9, positive 3 and positive 3, and negative 9 and 4 make negative 5. We did it. Now look, that equation has just an x. So when we swap y and x, we can get the y by itself and find the inverse. So I'm going to just take another tour. Can you guys... I'm going to start with y equals x plus 3 squared minus 5. Can you guys give this a go? There's three operations to do this time. Let's see how you can do. I'll, I won't leave you hanging, but let's just see how you guys do. Right here, because you, you guys might need a little bit of assistance for this one. Not with the first, probably not the second step either. First step, first step actually is swap the x and y. So x equals y plus 3 squared minus 5. First step is not so bad, right? Move over the minus 5. x plus 5 equals y plus 3 squared. Next step, you got to undo that squaring. We did the square root, but as we just talked about, got to keep the plus and minus. But this time, we're not left with y. We're not done. We've got y plus 3. But it's honestly not so bad, guys. How do we get the y by itself now? You just subtract 3. That's the last thing to do. Just move over this 3. Now, if I may make a suggestion, there's nothing wrong with putting the minus 3 on the very, very end. But in my opinion, it's uh, cleaner to write the minus 3 out front like so. Uh, don't write this down. The reason is for, and I see this happen all the time in calculus. If you write the minus 3 on the end like this, some people are going to treat that minus 3 as being inside the square root. So I just like to avoid that. Yes, Rose. Okay. Um, all right, we got it. The inverse function here. Uh, minus 3 plus or minus the square root of x plus 5. We can do it. I believe in you guys. Everything we've done today is manageable. You guys have the skills. I believe in you. Put a box around that. All right, so um, my expectations would be this is the level I would expect you guys to be able to find the inverse of a quadratic function. I could take it to the next level where I give you guys an A value that's like not one, but in my opinion, it's just an overly complicated thing to do when the example we just did gets the point across. So that's the level I expect you guys to do. All right. Um, any Leafs fans in the room? Uh, Bort's been hanging around John Tavares a bit too much. Uh, Bort's now selling amulets that protect you from Wi-Fi and bad energies and help you heal faster. Anyone get that reference? No. Um, uh, Russell Brand is selling these as well. Um, 
Another fun fact, the AMS also separate uh, gullible people from their money. So another cool thing it does. So Bort is sell, uh, selling these. I have, if, if you're wearing one of these right now, uh, I apologize. Also, can I have 250 bucks? Because you seem to have that much to spend, just on random things. Um, but Bort's selling these. And he's, we're going to say his employer, this pyramid scheme, there, he makes 600 per week, but he also gets 5% of however much he sells. So uh, we're gonna time travel back to grade nine when you guys learn about partial variation. And we're just gonna make a function, a linear function here for how much he makes. I'm using E for earnings and A for amulets, so like the dollar amount of amulets that he sells. Okay. So there's two parts to what he makes. There's like a fixed part. He makes 600 bucks no matter what. And then 5% of all that he sells. That's not five times A, it's gonna be 0 0.05 times A, right? That's 5% as a decimal. You guys okay with that? This is the fixed part of his income. You guys did lots of these in grade nine. And this is the, um, this is what we call like the commission. Commission. All right, can you guys do this for me? We're going to start off by just putting earnings equals 600 plus 0 0.05A. Can you guys flip-flop the A and the E? Or excuse me, uh, let me reword that. Can you guys, it's already good the way it is. Um, can you guys solve this equation for A? It's just a little two-stepper. You guys are doing great. Just two steps here to get the A by itself. Move over the 600. equals 0 0.05 times A. And then uh, we just have to divide by 0 0.05. And uh, I'm just gonna leave it like this. E minus 600 divided by 0 0.05 equals A. So our first equation gave you his earnings if he sells a certain amount of amulet money. Um, what do you think this new equation gives you? You put in an E and it spits out an A. So let's put that into words. What do you guys think? So first equation, you put in the amount he sells, spits out his earnings, this one, you put in his earnings and it spits out the amount, the dollar amount of amulets that he sells. So this new equation, and we'll wrap up with this. The new equation gives you uh, the dollar amount, I should say. Given his earnings. So for example, if you plug in E equals 1,500, it will tell you how much amulets he would have had to sell to get that earnings of 1,500. So way back in grade nine, when you guys were doing this thing, you were actually doing inverse of a function. It's just we couldn't tell you what that is because you didn't know what, um, you didn't guys didn't know what uh, functions were you. All right, we did it. So I think this lays out what I lead you guys to know. What I would love, let's just summarize, what I'd love for you guys to be able to do, if I give you guys a simple linear function or a simple quadratic function, I'd love for you guys to be able to fill this entire placement. Graph, table, algebraically find the inverse, and do a little flow chart with opposite operations. I also would expect you guys to find the inverse of a function in standard form 
when the A value is one. I promise I won't make you do this if the A value is not one, okay? Um, and then I'd expect you guys, if I gave you guys a simple equation based on real life, then you could find the inverse using algebra as well. Anything you guys want to chat about, and I'll just, I'll just actually 